Welcome to the NBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Roman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silverquill. I am ill and they still get me on this show. What sorcery is this? Oh, I'm sorry, man. Uh, the contract says you still need to do a show with us because Transformers. Ta, curse you, fine print. <laughs> uh, evil. <laughs> Anywho, also joining us is Jacob. Hello, everybody. Oof, this was a long pause, like, really long. Kind of. Like, the audience at home still had um, Guild Wars to contend with. Oh, yeah, sure, it's got our content going on. But yeah. considering pony stuff, it's been a <laughs> bit uh, slow. Yeah, I mean, granted, um, birthdays and whatnot. So, yeah. And conventions. Oh, true. But enough of that, um, in today's episode review, we are going to review the My Little Pony Cross Transformers Friendship in Disguise comic, issue number 4. Uh, in this issue, Applejack and her family rally to save Suit Apple Acres from the Decepticons and Twilight Sparkle and Optimus Prime band the ponies and Autobots together to drive their drive off their enemies. So anyway, uh, before we officially start first impressions are in order and silver since you're under the weather we'll go with jacob first okay right so uh, i honestly like the second story more than the first one first because uh, when the majority of story is just action it feels like really fast and the second reason uh, well i'm not gonna spoil it uh, we'll get to that when we get there all right, all right. Uh, Silver, what about you, man? Well, the first story is, is like Jacob said, just a big old fight scene. Uh, there's not, The most curious thing is the colors involved, and I'll get into that. Mm-hmm. But then it's what, the second is also really a big fight scene, but with more dialogue. And, uh, well, getting to see ponies and Transformers working together. Along with uh, yeah, a, a decent hook for <laughs> the next series. Uh, I mean... Which would also have a hook for the next two series that will never happen. Oh, man, that sucks. All righty then. Um, and as for me, I like this comic. This comic is fun. Um, I, I love how the story unfolds. But, uh, I mean... Probably this is how do I put this. Most of the stuff that's happening is like, wait, what? When did this happen? What's the timeline again? Wait, I, I don't get it. Like, wait, what? 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 <laughs> but putting that aside, yeah, this is fun. I, I love just looking at the art, the action scene, and whatnot. And some of the artists that work on it, like um, for the second part, the finale, uh, done by Tony Fleece. And the Applejack one, uh, done by Sarah Petre du Roche, something like that. And did she work on a pony comic before this, or this is this her first time? Let's see here. I'm, I'm just pondering because, I uh, know I think she's a Transformers artist. Yeah, she's she's a Transformers artist. Huh. Cool. Her art is pretty awesome. And yeah, uh, j- just looking at the work, like, majority of the comic here is 90%, uh, sorry, uh, the, her section, 90% of the work she did is mostly ponies. So, she did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> so, anywho, uh, let's get into it. So, if you have not read this comic here, pause here and go do so. <laughs> Welcome back. We have ponies, we have Transformers, and let's go! So we start off the comic with Applejack spotting her apple trees getting eaten by insects. And huge one at that too. Uh, She tried everything from watering them down, hitting them with a rake, watering down again, pushing them from trees, and nothing seems to be working. The um, uh, Insecticons seem to really enjoy eating the apple trees and keep on munching. 
I'm a bit confused by this concept of them munching on organic matter. Probably, Silver, you can answer me this. Why? Well, in the uh, G1 cartoon where these folks originated, or where these cons originated, uh, they had fallen out of the spaceship that held all the Transformers as it crash landed on Earth. So they landed in a remote area, took on uh, the only modes available at the time, insects, and, I get, and apparently adapted to consume organic matter. They're a plague, basically. Locusts? Just like a locust plague. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... All right, so they so they adapted to consume um, organic matter for energy. Then, yes, indeed. Huh. Okay, that sounds smart. Why didn't the other Decepticons kind of do that? Because Megatron is, gives into the uh, philosophy of technoism that robotic life is superior to human or organic life. So feasting on it would he would view that as a downgrade, as a corruption of their ideal. And this goes the same for the Autobots. Why not the same thing? The Autobots aren't going to eat the world they're going to protect. I, I mean, like I'm more thinking of having a meal, you know, kind of eating the hamburgers and whatnot. Well, I'm. One, you have to prove to me that, like, those hamburger patties from uh, McDonald's are organic. <laughs> I, I mean, you, <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to say anything because, yeah, that's, that's a question for, yeah, that, that's a good question. <laughs> All right, um, carrying on. Uh, Applejack is in a TZ because, oh no, what do I do? Because if this keeps continuing on, the farm is going to go bankrupt and I am going to be out of a job. This god comes in just commenting like, oh my, those things out there are very, very bad. And Applejack puts the blame on Discord for this. And Discord says, no, this is too mundane for me. I, I did it. Before. You know what? I didn't do this kind of thing. So you can't blame me on this. But what I can do is help you get rid of them because they're jerks. And the scene that happens next is just too awesome. <laughs> On your left. <laughs> yeah. And fun fact, Avengers Endgame came out first. So this is a strong reference to that. So I'm going to pause here before we go into fighting. What do you guys think? Jacob. Well, this is where Encounter the second reason why I don't like this story very much. Mostly because Discord fixes the whole thing instead of an Autobot turning up and assisting fighting the Insecticons. Oh. Silver, are there any Autobots that are frequent opponents of Insecticons? And if not, uh, can you think of one that would feel better in this situation? Well, the Insecticons don't really have a, a rival Autobot. One of their things is that they have the ability to multiply, uh, create uh, clones of themselves so you can actually get an Insecticon Plague. Mm. I guess they didn't feel the need to do it because there's tiny ponies. Applejack, though, I feel like Ultra Magnus would be the best partner to pair up with Applejack. Both are very responsible. Both both are uh, very honest, by-the-book kind of beings. And often having to be the second in command if uh, if the primary leader is a little out of it, let's just say. Mm. Why did you say his name was again? Ultra Magnus. Ultra Magnus. He's a card, by the way. (laughs) Actually, he's a he's a truck, a pickup. He's a car transport truck. Mm, True. Also, he's a uh, he's a Magic the Gathering card. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I know, I did show you, did. Ah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Much funds. Also, um, I, I checked out getting all 11 or 14. Yeah, getting all 14 of those cards are going to cost me about 50 plus dollars. 
Well, better than other charges for magic. Oh God, that's going to have a. That's going to be another conversation we're going to have later on. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, but I honestly think that Discord's presence sort of cheapens the story mostly because he already appeared in the previous issue with Fluttershy and Soundwave. But mm. here's the thing, though. After the last review, when we had that little brainstorm at the end, uh, when talking about the change to Windblade's character f- to fit Rainbow Dash, instead of... Uh, and uh, I inserted the thought that... Uh, if Triptychon had appeared, so we could have a better story since Windblades are city speakers, uh, as Zero mentioned, and can communicate with uh, city sized Transformers. And I begin to wonder if Fluttershy issue would have been would have been improved if both Windblade and Soundwave were in the same issue instead of having Discord in it. It's funny, I had a similar thought process. Our, our, our thoughts are parallel. Ooh. Great minds think alike. <clears throat> <coughs> yeah. Excuse me. Nice, nice. Uh, all right, all right. Um, Silver, what do you think about this to um, to this point? Well, here's the thing: the Insecticons are very much driven by base instincts: feed, consume, multiply, but not in the uh, biological sense. Mm. And so they're pretty mindless. You're pitting them against the Apple family, which is more of a commitment of awareness. Uh, familial bonds. Uh, what is it? You can't choose your relatives, but you can actually choose your family. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I like that dynamic. I'm also curious in the G1 comp, uh, G1 cartoon, there were only three Insecticons Bombshell, Kickback, and Shrapnel. This comic has taken the deluxe Insecticons, toys that never made it to TV of Barrage, Chop Shop, Ransack, and Venom and change their colors to match the original trio. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious that they chose to include all the Insecticons rather than clone the others, which may be, in the short term, better to draw six unique characters rather than draw three over and over and over and over. I'm I'm guessing it's because, like you mentioned before, it's better to draw six unique assets. But in in all honesty, I couldn't tell the difference. And instead of just cloning three, cloning three, I mean, this okay. Uh, this could be a parallel universe where instead of the original three, we got all six of them. Not very possible. I mean, this is a generations issue. You get all manner of transformers from every facet of that franchise mm-hmm. but he, but here's a good visual example you, the two page spread where the Apple family and the Insecticons charge one another mm-hmm. look at the two grasshopper uh, Insecticons, they're right one's right above the other Yeah, I, I was taking a good look see of, wait, are they uh, a carbon copy of each other no, they're, they're different they're different the one that is, I would argue, more detailed is Ransack, a deluxe figure. Top one? Below him is Kickback, the original. Mm-hmm. In fact, I would almost say... No, that's... No, for a minute there, I thought they had paired up each one with its predecessor, but no, okay. not quite. Mm-hmm. In fact, we only get a shot of all seven Insecticons after they're retreating. Oh, they're seven? They're seven. One, two, three, four... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In in the picture art here, there's seven. It's just hard to tell <laughs> because they're all of a uniform color scheme: black, yellow, and purple. Which is which is even before the apples whoop the stuffing out of them. <laughs> I I I don't know how to feel about that. Honestly, like I like the uniformity, yay! But at the same time, too, they don't they don't seem unique. <laughs> Well, welcome to the Decepticon style. You have fewer unique units, but plenty of recolors of the same designs. That's basically how their army functions. Look at the uh, Starscream and his Seekers. Oh, yeah. Uh Mm -hmm. Look at Reflector. Three triplets that transform into one camera, but have very little individuality. It's kind of a theme with the Decepticons that... You have mightier bots, but they are lacking individuality. 
which might explain why they're always trying to double cross each other. Yeah. Just to be themselves, unique. Mm-hmm. Oh man, could you just imagine if this this is done? Is this series is done now? Like, oh, I'm going to be unique. I'm going to be an influencer. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> You know, it kind of it kind of works. Like if they influence like the market in the um, Earth, like oh, um, people say, "Oh, cool effect, bro! Nice AI thingy that you have." Okay, we will use this. <laughs> this is valid, yay! <laughs> oh, boys. <clears throat> but anywho, I'm gonna carry on. So. We see them fight. Uh, like Silva mentioned, there's a two spread, uh, two page spread of the Apple family fighting the uh, Insecticons. We see Applejack, uh, Babsies, and I got no idea, Pony. Who is that? Caramel Apple? Something like that? Uh, they're, they're stomping on an Insecticon. We see them lassoing one of the grasshoppers down. And I got no idea what is going on. Maybe Silva, you can tell me. But. Why is the grandma pony uh, hoofing some kind of grenade? And it- ah, that's bombshell. She's fighting probably the scariest of the insecticons. Uh, basically, he has the ability. Those shells will actually penetrate the skull of a transformer and turn them into a mindless drone of bombshell. So, all right, that, that is scary. That is scary. And oh my god! Honestly, this cheapens che- sorry, this cheapens bombshells, um, lure and whatnot. But it's funny. It is funny. And then, uh, after that fight, the insecticons retreat and flee the scene, and the apple families win. Yay! Yep. And I don't see nothing wrong with that, but. Yeah, I noticed there's no Autobots here. So, yeah, having Ultra Magnus join the fray could change the type of battle. But, you know, honestly, I I don't know what to say, man. Like, the message here is just that, you know what? I got no idea what the message is. Family overcomes... All odds? Impulse. I, I guess, probably... Our family is more evolved than just base instincts. Or it's nothing real. It's just an action uh, story. <laughs> oh, that too. That too. <laughs> but anywho, let's continue on with the next one because the next one is going to be pretty fun. So we start the story in the Crystal Empire where the Student Six, you know what? They, they officially had a name. Um, th- their name is the Young Six. I'm going to reject that. <laughs> Same. <clears throat> yeah, I like Student 6. So, the Student 6 reports back to Princess Cadence that, yeah, we, we check all the locations that you told us about, and there are things that Princess Twilight um, reported about aliens and being Decepticons and whatnot. Yep, yep, they're there, and um, they're causing trouble. And Cadence asks, what do they want? Do you guys know anything? And before they, before she gets an answer, boom, her castle wall crashes open because Megatron's blasted it open and wanting to take over the kingdom? Something like that? And Chrysalis is there too with her band of baddies. And we see the Decepticons here with their group. Uh, we got Megatron in the middle, Soundwave, Shockwave, uh, Starscream, and I'm guessing those are the Insecticons, right? Yeah. The original trio. All right. And with Chrysalis and her changelings and two giant Godzilla-sized monsters? Wait, what? I think it's- I think that's one of the monsters from the show that Changelings can transform into. At least I recall, uh, uh, what was the episode uh, where, where Crystal is and Kozy Glow team, to get, team up together to retrieve Grogar's bell. 
And when when they first do it solo, we see Chrysalis transform into a giant uh, crocodile lizard uh, rock thing. Although they're called cragdiles. Yeah. Although in this case, Although, I don't know how can they be cragdiles or anything crocodile related when they're all standing on two feet. Or this huge. Well, uh, here's what I figure: the changelings cut, took the crocodile and made some very generous. Uh, changes, including horns on the top, fangs, and wings. And I've often been curious, is it possible if, like, three changelings stack, can they shapeshift into one larger being? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that is a good question. <laughs> oh, wow. That is going to be fun. Also, where, where are combaticons <laughs> when you need them? Then again, if they were here, you'd probably hear Brawl scream across the battle to asking Megatron if he can toss Starscream's head into orbit. <laughs> oh, boys. But, anywho. Um, Megatron here crashes in and just demands one thing. Uh, surrender and give us all your magical items so we can turn them into Energon Cubes. And, yeah. That, that's the only thing. Surrender and give us your stuff. And Chrysalis just uh, chimes in saying that yeah, after he's done with uh, what, whatever he wants to do, I'll get to conquer everything else. Yeah! Cadence just says yeah, um, you know what? Uh, that, that, that would be lovely, but no, because I have some other friends here that says otherwise. And comes in Twilight and Optimus Prime. And in all honesty, oof. The art style for the Autobots here, they're not great. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tony, but I, I just have to call it out as I see it. Well, when you compare RC from Tony and the one that was done by the other guy who did uh, the issue for, the, what was it, for Rarity in RC, yeah, there's a real stark, stark difference on that one. But I did forget to ask you earlier something. Well, mm -hmm. Student Seeds are basically envoys from neighboring lands whose, rep whose representatives would likely go to war with the Kestria if something happened to them. So, who ordered them to go out and do Ratcon? Uh, I mean, Raycon. Mm, not sure. Hmm. Mm, probably Twilight. Twilight, stop doing that! <laughs> mm. Yeah. Of course. <clears throat> Let's see. Nah, uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna learn about friendship, you gotta learn to take risks for friends too. That is true. No diplomatic immunity, no no hoof, claw, mandible, or other appendage holding. <laughs> uh, still, an all out brawl is what you need sometimes. <laughs> I do still find it a bit uh, irritating that Disco is in the middle of a fight when he could have just finished everything with the snap of his finger. Oh yeah, to totally, but you know, <laughs> Disco's whole MO is chaos, and fighting is chaos, so this is fun for him. Obviously he could just snap his fingers, claws, whatever, and solve this problem in a GIF, but he's there just to protect Fluttershy. We all know that. <clears throat> but anywho, continuing on. Well, sorry, Silva, you want to say something? Actually, just with the two praise spread fight, uh, Tony showed off this spread during an online convention during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that always stood out to me is where Optimus decks Starscream. <laughs> yep, <laughs> Starscream. You could have a close up on his face and hear the song "How Could This Happen to Me" <laughs> playing. Yep. Yeah, I, I I'm mean, just, <laughs> sorry. I'm just seeing over there a rat riding a pink car. <laughs> Rarity, right? yep, yep. Rarity and RC still teaming up. Yep, yep. I mean, <laughs> for for Starscream, <laughs> it's just Starscream, man. Like, ah, <laughs> uh, you. To be honest, I feel like that's a bit wrong. Why that art there is a bit wrong, because. It should be Megatron decking Starscream. <laughs> and if you ask why, because. <clears throat> but anywho, 
Um, oh, Prime here tries to diplomatically talk to Megatron to Megatron. Uh, we shouldn't really fight here. This is not our place. Let's go home. And Megatron says, no, we fight. All right, and they do. They do. And um, one of the most hilarious thing I've ever seen is this one where Soundwave ejects a cassette tape just to reveal Pinkie Pie. What? <laughs> That's just... Don't- don't ask questions, Norman. Her fourth wall abilities no, no limits. Indeed. And yeah, man, like that is just <laughs> yep, 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 yep. So um while while the fighting's going on, Megatron just tells Soundwave, sorry, um Shockleaf to grab whatever magical thing and just turn it to Energon. Uh he goes and yep, he encounters a bit of resistance and uh, meets up with Bumblebee, the Student Six, the Royal Family, and Tempest, and oh, also yeah. the CMCs. Oh. oh, also the teachers. Yay! Good well, for it that. Makes se- it makes sense that the CMC are there <laughs> with their new member. New member who? Bumblebee. Fizzle- Discord. Fizzle Pop. Fizzle. Bear oh. Twist. I know, I know, but wait, what? New? Wait, how? That, that's a joke because uh, today's the uh, CMC day, uh, and the first picture that I saw is the one where the CMC are together and Tempest there is the yeah, new wearing mm. one of their, their cloaks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, timely. But, yeah, but uh, it's a good thing that uh, James Sasmus is thinking to the continuity. God damn it! Hold on. <laughs> No, oh, you, you owe me. You said it. Yeah. You owe me the cash. Here you go, Silver. Here's your 25 cents. <laughs> Although the joke's on you because it's not nearly as worth as. <laughs> Did that joke get over your head, Silver? Uh, it may have. Uh, you may just need to be jo- uh, drawn and quartered. <laughs> Oh man, that's great! I'll buy your that for a dollar. Box, uh, <laughs> your sound box seems a bit sick today. Well, uh, hey, it's uh, it's echoing its owner. <laughs> oh, Boy, but well, anywho, you were saying Jacob? Yeah, uh, that's about it. Wait, <laughs> all right, all right. So, anywho, um. We see Shockwave trying to get in, uh, encountering some uh, resistance, and Bumblebee just says, oh, I I like this place, this place looks really cool and whatnot, and the rules are blah, blah, blah. And Shockwave just says, you fool, you left yourself open. But now, man, Cadus just says, on the contrary, this kingdom is quite good at surviving, because a lot of bad stuff happened here and we have to fend for ourselves so yeah you're nothing to us and they blast the hell out of him uh, and we, we see a lot of fighting on below and a, a lot of talks um, Prime just tells uh, Megatron to give up because um, your fight isn't with this world and so on uh, Megatron just says, do you think uh, such a weak plea because... offer such weak pleas because you I expect I have some hidden compassion, blah blah blah. And Twilight just comes in and says compassion is... Uh, compassion is never a weakness, blah blah blah, uh, and so on. Just a tiny fraction of magic and so on but one one of the few things that I noticed here is just that Twilight just put a yellow cap on Megatron oh no she reverted Megatron back to his gun model <laughs> well that that is the history of Megatron yeah we've talked about and it and yes at one, at one point he actually did have an orange cap on his gun to show it was a toy <laughs> oh 
my god, that's so ah, uh, that that is just so funny. That that, that is just priceless. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm uh, just Twilight just saying the moral of uh being a good person is never a weakness and so on. And we see that um Chrysalis and, and she, he asked Chrysalis, Chrysalis, is this true? Like uh would uh, would what Princess Twilight say is true? Chrysalis just says just quickly finish the fight and we'll um get the powers and whatnot. And saying that um uh, Saying that some, uh, it will never wreck to the bridge. Like just saying that, yeah, if we finish the fight, uh, no backup will come in, and this will be ours. And somehow, Grimlock opens the gate, revealing well, the gate. They jump in, they help and fight, and we see an exosuit, uh, an exosuit, yes, and it's driven by Spike. Funny enough, because the kid that drove the Exo Armor, it was named Spike 2. <laughs> Continuity? Yes, no? And hey, there hey. goes news. <laughs> oh, coincidence. Too late. The other, well, you just gotta, you gotta specify Dragon Spike versus Annoying Spike. Oh, you mean Shay LaBeouf? No, 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 no. Ah, shut up. <laughs> oh, my God. They could have done so much better things with that character. Why, why did they even do that? Who knows? But uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out an Easter egg. Mm -hmm. uh, in the panel where Chrysalis is saying our new friends can simply continue their war here, mm -hmm. you see RC oh. battling a Decepticon. Oh, yeah, I was wondering what that, that is was about. That is Crasher, who was a GoBot. Oh, God. But for some reason, they made Crasher uh, a Transformers toy. Oh, funny enough yeah. that we're talking about this, right? Um, Linkara from atop, atop the fourth wall uh, did a completion of his Transformers review and whatnot. And from what I understand... Uh, Hasbro at the time wanted to combine GoBots and Transformers together? Was it? Yeah, very possible. So I'm not sure I know the context of the GoBots. Uh GoBots are Go Go Silver? Well, GoBots was a was a competitive line to Transformers. Funny enough, GoBots came out first, but it was rather cheap or half hearted. And as such, Transformers, with its more complex transformations, uh, won, won the battle. I will say, uh, GoBots, I, I partook of both, and I liked both. But GoBots had a Hanna-Barbera cartoon, which was a very different breed than, uh, than, uh, Sunbow's Transformers. Yeah, the, uh, was the symbol was also Marvel Studios. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I, I remember um, enjoying that Sunbow logo whenever we watch um, the Transformers thing, and always that uh, chrome-looking Spider-Man jumping in. That was fun. Right? Oh yeah! <coughs> Challenge but, of the Gobots. Yeah. Um, oh it's... yeah, I think I do recall watching that sometime in the night at some point. In honesty, I, I it didn't. Wasn't this... Yeah, it wasn't as big a thing as Transformers. They, I sort of view them as uh, second-hand Transformers, if anything. Wow, you, you, you at least managed to watch it. Over here in Malaysia, we didn't get it at all. And mind you, we got biker mice from Mars. We got that shark, um, street sharks. We got um, turtles. We got X-Men and... Funny enough, Felix the Cat. So you, you have to ponder why GoBots didn't manage to come in. Uh, no idea. Pro probably wasn't... Wait, did you get Scooby-Doo? Yes, we did. And this was before Cable. Well, okay, then... Well, then that that's the case. I mean, it's Hanna Barbera. If you don't get Scooby-Doo, something's wrong. Flintstone we do get. Uh, we get 
the cats like um Tom Cat and stuff. I, oh, I mean, forgot about that one. But yeah, still we we got that too. Anywho, continuing on, and then we can talk about this later on. Um, Spike comes in, save the day, and so on. <laughs> uh, punching Megatron in the chest. I think so. That's him. Yes, and. Queen Chrysalis just says, retreat, let's get out of here while uh, we leave our quote-unquote allies behind. Megatron grabs Chrysalis saying, no, you, you promised us magic, so we want the magics. And Optimus Prime and Twilight join power to blast, uh, <laughs> to blast what you call this Megatron and Chrysalis out of here. And yeah, somehow Rainbow Magic plus the Matrix of Leadership. Yes, no? Yes. Right. Uh, seems to work. And the ponies and Autobots save the day and they have a tea party and whatnot. So after the tea party, uh, all the bots are accounted for, all the Decepticons are accounted for. And Prime destroyed the space bridge. And uh, Gage just says, Wait, what? You, you destroyed it? Why? 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 <laughs> and Octopus Prime just says, You know, uh, we had good times with them and whatnot. But Corporate says we need to do it because there's no way that we are ever going to do another crossover with them. We just need to wait for the results of the profits if it's good enough we will do it and they did mm -hmm. and although sorry although we're left with one question last we see of chrysalis she's in megaton's grip so is she transported with the decepticons when they're uh thrown back um i don't see her in megatron's grip because megatron has open palms so what I'm guessing is that when they get the rainbow matrix blasted into them, uh, he got shocked and released her. So um, only Megatron is ported away and Chrysalis is left in Equestria. I'm sure I'm wrong here because if I'm not mistaken, uh, the second version of this um, the sequel to this is going to be on Cybertron and somehow ponies are there right? yep alrighty then but that's a tale for another day alrighty then so um, I'm saying no Chrysalis did not go there but then that still means she's on the loose yes and that's future's problem G5's thing yes G5's problem <laughs> Oh, boys. But anywho, um, Megatron as shock, uh, Shockwave. Did you get anything out of that adventure? At least anything. Shockwave says, no, Lord Megatron, but I did get data for a way to go if we need to go back there. <laughs> oh, boys. And with that, comic ends. <clears throat> so let's get into final thoughts. S give me a second. Okay, no. All right. Final thoughts? Silver? No, I'm going to start with Jacob. What do you think? Overall? Uh, well, uh, as I said, I like the second story more than the first one, which is unfortunate since C.M. Flynn was the one who wrote it. <coughs> but uh, I don't know. I think uh, the, it may have been the case uh, the same as was for the Guardians of Harmony, a very Author and artist work separately on each story part, which would explain why Discord's fix up uh, into story one after another. But my complaint, but despite my complaints, uh, for the most part, I'd say the friendships uh, in disguise was okay series. All right, all right. Silver, what do you think? Well, let's see. First story is just sort of the spectacle of it all. Not to. Uh, not much to say, not much to a character insight, other than poor Applejack just gets, uh, she gets the short change without getting to have an Autobot counterpart. And while I agree that Tony said that drawing this, it's kind of funny how one style 
influences others, that you're trying not to draw My Little Pony with really rigid, sharp lines, but it's also a challenge not to draw the Transformers with uh, curvy lines like of My Little Pony. Finding that balance between styles is difficult. So while they may not look like uh, the, the, the Transformers artwork I enjoy in IDW, I do see that it's a compromise between styles so that they look at least partially in line with My Little Pony. But it is just a great big spectacle and every, everything you'd want to interact if you <laughs> if you had kids with collections of Transformers and My Little Pony, this is the crossover you try to encourage. Uh, so basically what you're saying here is that this comic is just a reflection of the Lego movie. Mm, why not? Or Batman Lego. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all set within the Lego rules. You can set this within others. I mean, this one you can set it with Hasbro rules. I mean, in all honesty, you could just put in G.I. Joe in this one. That'd be something. My Little Pony meets G.I. Joe. Meets Transformers. Meets Mask. <laughs> There's oh, a pool. Actually, they they did that. I remember what Transformers and Mask or GI Joe and Mask. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm guessing they. Uh, aside from My Little Pony, they couldn't quite work that mm-hmm. in. There was a crossover between Transformers, GI Joe, Rom, Space Knight, <laughs> Micronauts, uh, Micronauts, and tra- a ma- and Mask. Mm-hmm. Basically, create an IDW universe. I'm surprised they didn't try to work in humanoids. In oh god, that would be something. So, mm, wow. Well, all right then. Uh, is it? Is all silver? Silver. So, right? yeah. Uh, Can yeah, you hear me? Is that your final thoughts? Those are my final thoughts. All right then. And as for me. I mentioned before earlier, I do enjoy the comic series. Uh, the artwork is a mixed bag of yes and no. And I, I just enjoy it. Like, just watching the ponies interact with the Autobots or the Septicons, it's just fun. Uh, I, I do love how certain things happen, like certain artworks. Like, they're just awesome. And just looking at Pinkie Pie interacting with just everything is just awesome. And yeah, in the end, I, I, I'm not expecting high-end Transformers stuff. This is a pony comic too. So the violence and whatever it is has to be toned down. And I, I get it. I get it. And yeah, overall, it's just cute fun it's just cute fun. <laughs> it's funny you say the violence I mean G1 ev- you could have any number of lasers shooting as long as they never hit anything <laughs> <clears throat> so wait is that why the reason the stormtroopers never hit anything because they're trying to be kid friendly <laughs> also because they lose the series if the stormtroopers had any aim <laughs> yeah Oh, boys. <clears throat> but anywho, uh, with that episode... Uh, coming in, series ends. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I'm guessing let's wrap it up. Uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbsogmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at show, and my personal Twitter account is at Roman Sanzo. Jacob, can, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on DeviantArtR under uh, username Yaka from Tordakar, uh, under Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tunnel Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in a dual fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, Silver, what about you? Well, the good people can find me on uh, Twitter, Demon Art on YouTube under MLP Silver Quill. And my YouTube will have links to other sites like my Patreon where you can support my After the Fact videos. 
And, well, there are still comics coming out, so every time a new comic is released on a Wednesday, you'll find me posting a review on EquestriDaily.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And... <clears throat> And also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, stay to radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. Links will be in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MPS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review, discussion, podcast, exclusive, and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, myself, Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vequil. I'm Jakob. And we'll, guys, catch you next week with another fun episode of the Yes Show. See ya! Transform and roll out! Bye-bye, everybody. So, on to the next one where we talk about stuff. Stuff. Oh, all the stuff. Yep. So much stuff. Yep. Bad stuff. Yep. Good stuff, bad stuff, whatever stuff. Oh, we're stuffed with so much stuff. Oh my god. Oh, that turkey stuffing was great, man. Mm-hmm.